the point of Bitcoin is to fix the money and money is energy and energy is life. And if I keep sucking the energy out of the economy, I'm sucking the oxygen out of your system. Either under the best case, you perform poorly. Under the worst case, I suffocate you to death or freeze you to death. That's the problem. That's why, it, that's why empires collapse. That's why economies collapse. And the problem, it's not just a problem for an individual. It's not just a problem for a family. It's a problem for every institution. It's a problem for every company. It's a problem for every city, every municipality, every government, every civilization. They all have this problem. And you can generally trace the problem to, I fought a war I couldn't afford to fight. And I paid for it with money I didn't have. You declare a war on... COVID, you've got a war. You declare war in Vietnam, you declare war on fill in the blank. History is full of wars. If I had to fight them with taxes, then eventually my population would say no more. We don't want to pay the tax. If I fight them by inflating the coinage, then I get a couple of years, two, three, four years before people realize it. Eventually I just collapse the currency. Money is essential to civilization. The problem is inflation, and why does it happen? It's a natural human condition because as you have an authority that controls the money, the temptation to inflate the money supply is, is omnipresent and, and inescapable, and every civilization has suffered from it at one point in time. What is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is the world's first engineered monetary system, and what happened is a set of engineers, nameless engineers, recoiled in horror after the great financial crisis with all the bank bailouts and they looked and they said this just isn't fair it isn't right we want to create a better money and they used two technologies they used the internet the idea that i could internet i could network hundreds of thousands or millions of computers and they used cryptography the idea that i could cryptographically sign something so that it could not be tampered with with anyone friend or foe and using those two technologies they conceptualized the idea of an immutable ledger, if you will, a bank in cyberspace. What if a hundred people got together, a hundred people with money got together and they said, we're gonna create a bank in cyberspace. We wanna put our money there and we don't trust each other. We don't trust the government. We don't trust any corporation. We don't even trust any one computer. So we create a program that keeps track of a ledger, 21 million coins or shares in the bank, divisible by 100 million, called this, uh, down to a Satoshi. So 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis. You don't have to know that all you need to know is there's 21 million coin units. You can't make any more. And they wanted to create it, uh, create it so that they could, um, they could send their money to each other, to anybody in the network. They could store it for 1,000 years, 10,000 years, a million years, forever, and they don't have to trust anybody. They created this idea of, of um, Bitcoin. It's an asset that's protected by cryptography, and it's stored on a ledger. Um, software, the software administers the ledger. The twist is we distributed the software on thousands and thousands of separate computers. Every, com every Bitcoin node is running a copy of the ledger. So everybody in the world that, that has their money in the bank has a copy of all of the money in the bank and all the transactions since the beginning of time. So it's the immutable truth. Every 10 minutes, the system takes a batch of a set of, contra uh, of transactions and then redistributes the money based upon, upon the instructions of the owners. If I want to send you my Bitcoin, I send it and it goes to you. And every single computer in the network updates that. And they all check it cryptographically using, using uh, modern encryption. How do we defend the network? Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. There's really three nodes of interest that make this uh, compelling. The first node is that Bitcoin node that keeps track of that ledger. It's the most secure uh, database in the world, and it's a database of immutable truth. It's, a, it's the ledger of money. The second node is a miner. It's, um, it's um, uh, 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 SHA-256, or it's an encrypting miner that's generating hash functions 
to protect the network, and there are millions of them. And they're all competing with each other to build the next block. There's only one out of two million involved in this network. It's like every, every miner gives you a lottery ticket, and one of the two million will get to build the next block and will get paid a lot of money, like $300,000. And you don't know which one. So the miners are a wall of encrypted energy. They're converting electricity into hashes. And then inside that wall of electricity or wall of energy is the Bitcoin ledger, which is distributed in a decentralized fashion. And there's one other interesting node called a lightning node. This is a layer two decentralized system. This is decentralized payments. It'll move small amounts of Bitcoin at the speed of light programmatically almost for free. Bitcoin is a decentralized, it's a decentralized piece of software. The brilliance of it is it's a bank in cyberspace that nobody controls, nobody can corrupt. It's, it, it's a bank run by incorruptible software offering a global, affordable, simple, secure savings account for everybody on earth that has neither the means nor the inclination to run their own hedge fund. Right? You have some money, you have life savings, you simply don't want to lose it. You want to put it in a bank. So Bitcoin is that bank in cyberspace. These Wait, engineers came up with this idea. Who are the engineers? We know some of them. They're the cypherpunks. They were, they were into cryptography. Uh, the most important of them was Satoshi, who we don't know who it was. Satoshi wrote the white paper, created the first version of Bitcoin, gave it to the rest. And initially, there wasn't any money in the network. They just ran it for a year as a hobby. Right, um, And then over time, there was a famous, ex famous transaction where somebody bought uh, a pizza right, for like 10,000 Bitcoin, <laughs> one pizza. And, uh, and that was the first transaction. And then the network gradually began to monetize as people bought into the network. And so it was, it's like a fire in cyberspace. Should we be nervous that we don't know the identity of the founder? No, I don't think we should be nervous. We should be joyful because... For Bitcoin to work, it needs to be money of the people. It needs to be not controlled by any individual. It needs to be not under the thumb of a founder or a corporation or one strong holder. The most important thing Satoshi did was he created this gift. He gave it to the world. I assume a he. Some people think she. Some people think it's multiple people. But Satoshi gave this gift to the world and disappeared. And Satoshi mined about a million coins getting it started, but they never, those coins never moved. Never. They've never been moved. Satoshi's never appeared again. And then the network was, was in essence a community development all around the world for the next decade. And it's simply grown from a million dollars in the bank to 10 million to 100 million to a billion to 10 billion to 100 billion. In March of uh, our second quarter of 2020, it was about $180 billion in this network. And that's where I got involved. I was late. But when I got involved, what I saw was I saw a, uh, an engineered monetary asset, a digital gold, if you will, sitting on an open big tech monetary network. And I said, this is an economic imperative because this solves the problem of inflation for a corporation with lots of cash. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, $1 million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits 
are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.